You're listening to Compete Sports Radio Network. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Compete Radio. This is Connie Wardman, your resident straight lady. And just let me give you a warning up front. We all have the creeping crud. So uh, if you hear sneezing and coughing in the background, it's just us. <laughs> For all uh, you whippersnappers out there, we're talking about creeping crud. I like the sound of your voice. It has this sexy vibe right now, a Brenda Vaccaro thing yeah, going on. Yeah, no, I sound like a teenage boy going through puberty, but what the heck on that? Um, anyway, let me introduce to you the stars of our show. We've got Buddy Early. Connie, did you know, first of all, hello everyone out there, and as Connie would say, radio land, or yes. listening land, or whatever land. He steals all my best lines. Did you know we just had a World Series, Connie? In, yeah, not a lot of people did. In it kinda, what? <laughs> it kind of no, went by it was the game a little ball, bit right? unnoticed, but uh, <laughs> it was actually a, a pretty good one. Oh, in, you in mean baseball? Respects. Yes. Oh, okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about the World Series, and I'll let you know who won. I'm so excited. Okay, and the other star of our show, Alfonso Chavez. Hello, everyone. And, you know, the creeping crud may uh, come through as I'm speaking <laughs> as well uh, because uh, we're all going through it here. Anyway, we're a family here at Compete. We share Sports everything. Media. Isn't it special? Yeah. So um, today in our uh, sports pop... Yay. We're going to be talking about Madonna and her hard candy gyms. She yeah. wears me out. Okay. And um, some gay performing arts groups are getting involved with some World Series betting, or they did. Um, I'm also going to touch a little bit upon some frustration when you do uh, some searching for gay athletes and what you get. I love it when you touch on frustration. Yeah, and uh, some of the, the men to have watched during the World Series. Oh, mm. I'm interested to hear All more about right. that. All right. Well, now, we're going to just take a quick break and have a wonderful commercial from our uh, parent company, Compete Network. Take it away. Compete Sports Radio Network. Uh, This edition of Compete Radio is brought to you by CompeteNetwork.com. Set up your own profile and you'll be automatically entered to win great prizes in our winner 2010 sweepstakes. Each week, CompeteNetwork.com will select a winner. Prizes include free subscriptions to Compete Magazine, DVDs, and the grand prize is two airline tickets anywhere in the continental U.S., to join, go to CompeteNetwork.com and click on the Community tab. You're listening to Compete Sports Radio Network. All right, thanks. We hope that you're going to go to Compete Network on the web and click on our community tab. We really invite you to join us, not just for the the radio show, but also read the blogs, tell us what you're thinking, let us know what's going on. All right, buddy, take it away. Okay, so we just had another World Series come and go, and as I know... Connie didn't pay any attention, <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I'm just I glad it's gone. Chastised. It, yeah, I, I'm going to admit I didn't watch much of it because I didn't have much of an interest. But oh my I tuned word. in every now are and then. Are you sick? Well, sicker than you are now. Anyway, congratulations <laughs> to the San Francisco Giants who um, won their first World Series title. It's actually the first World Series title uh, for the Giants since 1954. Mm. I think you were there for that, Connie, weren't you? Uh, no, that yeah. that was um, way before my – and actually, no, I'm like 45 <laughs> centuries old, but – well, I didn't actually, get out there for that. It's the first World Series title for the Giants since 1954. That was the famous Huzzah. Bobby Thompson home run. The Giants win the pennant. The Giants win the pennant. You you certainly know that. It's one uh, of the most famous home runs Let me get back ever. to you on that okay. one. <clears throat> but that was when they were in New York. Um, so this is the first World Series for a San Francisco team. So they're so. a bi-coastal team. Or, well, they have been. <laughs> never mind. They're okay. bi <laughs> Curious. Um, <laughs> So congratulations to the Giants. If you remember, uh, with a f- couple of weeks left in the uh, baseball season, I made some predictions about who was going to oh. not only be in the playoffs, but go. be in the World Series and win it. Drum roll, please. And the San Francisco Giants were not even <laughs> on my radar, and oh. yet they ended up making the playoffs and winning the World Series. So kudos to them. And I guess I should be happy because I love the city of San Francisco. I'm a National League guy ever since, you know, I was knee-high to a grasshopper. I love the National <laughs> League as opposed to the American League. Talk about obscure references. It, it okay. made the election results from Tuesday a lot better. And 
that at least Mecca, you know, has their World Series title again. But I always have, a, have had a problem with the San Francisco Giants just because I always really had a strong disliking for Barry Bonds. So that sort of made me hate the Giants. But I guess I'm okay with the Giants winning. And They're very happy, by the way. For the record, Connie, they beat the Texas Rangers. Ring a bell? No? Range? No. Okay. One I know the, inter- the Kilgore Rangerettes. <laughs> One of the interesting things about this Giants team, though, is that what you see in professional sports a lot is that a team takes on the persona of the city that they're in. For That's example, true. you know, you have the Los Angeles Lakers. They've always been about, you know, showtime, pizzazz, and offense, Water sports. and highlights, and just, oh, no. you know, Cholos. sort of Hollywood <laughs> fun and excitement. You know, you take someone like the Pittsburgh Steelers, yeah. their team <gasps> takes on the persona of that city. They're just kind of lunch pail guys, go to work and play hard and, you know, beat each other up and blue collar types. And then you have the San Francisco Giants team, you know, that's a self-described mis- misfits and cast-offs. Fabulous. And a little, yeah, a little weird. You have their ace pitcher, Tim Lincecum, who talks about, you know, smoking pot all the time. In fact, after their World Series win uh, in Game 5, he told ESPN that he hoped in San Francisco there was a lot of beer flowing and smoke in the air. And so you've got this really kind of band of misfits out there in San Francisco playing for the Giants, and and it just sort of adds to the whole San Francisco colorful personality. They had a parade, in fact. (laughs) Milieu. Milieu, yes. 1.5 million people showed up uh, the other day for their victory parade. A lot of people took the day off, obviously, played hooky in San Francisco because it was on a Wednesday. Did Dykes on Bikes kick off this parade, too? (laughs) Did who? Dykes on Bikes. Did they kick off this parade also? I wouldn't have been surprised because that's how they roll in San Francisco. Go, no pun intended. <laughs> oh my! Um, <laughs> one other thing to mention about this World Series uh, that's very important is, and I've been beating this horse for a while now about the Major League Baseball pushing the Yankees down our throats. Well, since the Yankees weren't in the World Series, this was the lowest rated World Series, the second lowest um, in the last three decades, and uh, you know, Major is League America Baseball is America losing have to its love something. affair with baseball? Major League Baseball is going to have to do something to start building up the popularity of other teams because they can't expect the Yankees to be there every year. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. So they're in trouble. You know, I've read somewhere recently that more and more Americans are sharing my opinion of baseball, that it's boring. Yeah, and that's that's just the way it is. You know, people don't want to sit and watch. There's still a lot of purists who love the game, and there's a lot of good reason to, but, you know, they got to do something to get people excited about it. Before my time's up, I wanted to mention on another topic, um, there was a report that came out a a week or two ago from Ithaca College um, about the so-called free ride that college athletes get. uh, Well, we've talked about that one before. Right. And I've been a little wishy-washy on the subject of paying college athletes. Mm -hmm. Uh, The more I learn and the more I discuss it, I think there needs to be some system and program where college athletes can get paid. And, and the re, this study kind of bears that out. The so-called free ride really isn't free. The study from Ithaca College uh, found that the average athlete ends up having to pay just under $3,000 annually in school-related expenses. Now, the catch is, you know, we talk about other scholarship students, you know, like here in Arizona, we have the Regents scholarships, you know, that sort of give a free ride to academic uh, yeah. people. Um, you get a Regent scholarship or any kind of academic scholarship, you know, you're also applying for all kinds of other scholarships, and you can just get them one on top of the other, and you can also go get a part-time job and that kind of thing. When you're a student athlete, well, athletes can't you can't do get that. a part-time yeah. job. Yeah, that's Not true. only that, but you get your scholarship, and then you have to commit 20 hours a week to practice and then go play in the games. So these are scholarship students who are not just given a scholarship for something that they've accomplished, you know, like someone who's gotten good grades or plays the clarinet very well. There's so much more expected of them in order for them to keep this scholarship. And what you see are, you know, since a lot of these athletes, particularly in sports like football and basketball, um, come from really underprivileged families, they struggle. I mean, they, they struggle to put food on the table. They, you know, they can't go to a movie with their friends. They can't do, you know, very much of anything. And so I kind of think that the time has come where we talk about giving some kind of stipend or payment to some of these athletes since the universities are making millions off of them. Well, so, you know, I'm, I, 
I don't disagree on the stipend part because when I was when I was going to Arizona State, I had a couple of students that I taught, and I was paid a stipend by the university for teaching these high school students. Yeah. But on the other end, that's part of the investment you make, you know, possibly to get into the NFL and have this multi-million dollar contract. Most of these students who are there on academic scholarships, let's be honest, are not going to have multi-million dollar contract paying jobs. Right, but for the time that they're there in school, mm-hmm. they have many other opportunities to well, support themselves, whereas a, a college football player, for example, doesn't, can't, cannot have, is forbidden mm-hmm. from having a part-time job and couldn't if they wanted to because of their schedule. So I just think something's got to be done to, to help some of these students out. And I hope at the same time that uh, they take a look at all of the elements that play into that because, you know, a medical student can't go out and do all these other things either, but he winds up, by the time he's 30, he finally gets his practice or she gets her practice and they have to pay back millions of dollars. So, you know, there are inequities across the board, Mm -hmm. and so before they do anything, I hope they really do pay some attention to the research. I think there's a way, since that medical student has other ways to get income from sort of uh, internships or, you know, some in-service, some jobs, that kind of thing, but... uh, I, and I'm not talking about million-dollar salaries, obviously. I'm talking yeah. about a few extra thousand to help them, you know, have more than ramen on the table. <laughs> ramen is good. Oh, that's my spiel for this. All righty. Well, thank you very much. Box. Listen, we want to take a quick break and hear from our friends at Summit Ski Week weekend. Compete Sports Radio Network. This portion of Compete Radio is brought to you by the Summit Ski Weekend, January 20th to the 23rd in Blowing Rock, North Carolina. Summit 2011, the third annual North Carolina Gay Ski Weekend, continues to get bigger and better every year. 2011 will be no exception as we make plans to return to Blowing Rock, North Carolina. Presented by the NC Mountain Boys in conjunction with JustTwirl.com, the 2000 event promises to be bigger and better than ever, featuring more events and activities at a lower price. Summit 2011 activities will be centered at Crestwood Resort and Spa near the town of Blowing Rock, North Carolina. Book your room package at Crestwood and be in the center of the action. For more information, visit www.ncgayskiweekend.com. You're listening to Compete Sports Radio Network. All right, thank you. This is um, a great ski weekend that's coming up. In fact, uh, let me put in a plug for our latest issue of Compete Magazine that has a complete article in there on um, wonderful gay ski weekends and and weeks. All across the country, yeah. yeah. Even in Canada. We'll have an opportunity to get to that a little more uh, a little later on in the show. All right. Well, Alfonso, tell us what's going on in sports. Well, uh, the first item I mentioned today was Madonna has decided to open some hard candy, that's the name of them, hard candy, fitness centers, uh, and she's going to be opening the first of these in Mexico City, and the um, the launch, which is on November 29th, Madonna's actually going to go to Mexico City and will be on hand for the launch of this gym. So I know all these Madonna queens are who, who've never set foot in a gym <laughs> will get memberships just so they can have that hard candy Madonna gym membership card or, or oh, whatever they give you or a bill they can frame somewhere in their house. Sure. I, I can see this coming up on eBay as a big seller in, uh, you know, 40 years from now or whatever. How yeah. soon are they thinking of rolling out other gyms beyond this one? Uh, that I really didn't get too much into. I, I, You know, if somebody Googles Madonna hard candy fitness, they can probably find it that way. I just kind of took a little... A bit of the important part that's coming up. Oh, okay. But they're going to be worldwide. Wow. Yeah, she's gonna, she's, yeah it's not quite going to be golds, I, I don't think. Well, I'm sure she'll have a more diverse, uh, more div- better diversity policies than well, golds. And I'm sure that the music will be a little better than elevator music, so. You know, and nobody will care if you vogue on the treadmill. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> yeah. So the next item I actually wanted to get into has to do with the World Series. Now, the uh, the Dallas Voice reported that members of Dallas and San Francisco's gay community, um, they made a little friendly bet. Uh, what happened that led up to this was the publisher of the Dallas Vo- Voice and the Bay Area reporter, they got together and decided that if the other team wins, 
they'll make a $1,000 donation to a charity in the winning team city, and then they'll appear in the winning city's newspaper dressed in the winning team's gear. Mm-hmm. So some people down in Texas are going to be appearing in San Francisco, right. you know, Bay Area reporter. So this is, this is what happened. Uh, the Turtle Creek Corral and the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus, they decided they want a piece of this action. Uh, so the losing team's artist, uh, artistic director, excuse me, the losing chorus's artistic director <laughs> okay. will have to wear the winning city's performance uh, garb. So whatever they perform in, they'll have to wear the other uh, choirs, choruses. Are a lot uniform. of gold lames have to die for this to happen? I, well, you know, it's kind of something where I'm kind of scratching my head, going, "Well, they probably <laughs> wear tuxedos, so they're going to wear I the don't other." No, in San directors. Francisco, it could be hot pants and tank tops. You could be right, though. And some, hot pink boas. Some leg warmers, a headband. Ooh. So uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be worn during a rehearsal. And it'll oh, be now played later on for the a you know, rehearsal. For the why not team. do it for the real concert? I mean, that's putting I it agree. on the line. That's a bet. It, it would have been, but you know, I guess they weren't re- quite ready to go that far. Mm. But I'm I'm probably going to follow up with this and, and find out from you know the people in San Francisco if this actually happened and see if we can get some of those pictures on our blog. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah. All right. One other thing I wanted to bring up is, you know, generally we do searches for news or we try to see, keep up with what's current. And is anybody else really irritated that when you type in gay sports, gay athlete, gay soccer, gay football, porn sites come up? Oh, yeah. Uh. That, and, and they have, it's not even, it, it doesn't even have that in the theme in the porn. You know, it's just a tag but slap there's, right there. There's some reason that's popping up. I mean, there's, uh, sometimes I wonder if that's uh, the people who want those images out there are somehow using those they're, keywords. They're, yeah, you know? they're using those keywords because they know yeah. it's trending or it's. Yeah, but there's nothing popular. sports about it. It's exactly. Just hot guys who work out, and that's kind of the connection. Oh, they're um, both athletes. Well, I suppose it's a matter of semantics, too. Sure. I, I, anybody can call themselves an athlete, right? Well, yeah. I mean, in in those terms, would a construction worker be an athlete just right. because he lifts things and moves things right. all day? Hubba you know? hubba, baby. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> How do you think the village people got started? Come on. I, you know, I really don't know, but if, if the movie Can't Stop the Music is a true documentary, oh, I think man. I know exactly how they got started. It, I thought it was. Steve Gutenberg's older sister so got real. together with the village people. And, uh, anyway, anyway. Um, so the, the, the next item I wanted to talk about before I get into our little quick items is Swoonworthy.net gave its list of men to I watch. I that name. Swoonworthy, yeah. yes. It's, it's, you know, they got some good looking men on As that side. As opposed to Spongeworthy. Two completely <laughs> different things to keep in mind. Okay, <laughs> um, so in the so they they have this list of men to watch in the 2010 Major League Baseball season, and this was uh, on Towel Road where I found this information, and this is who they included on their list of men to watch: uh, Cliff Lee, pitcher; uh, Josh Hamilton, left fielder, both of the Texas Rangers. Josh Hamilton's hot. Cliff are, Lee, I'm not so crazy about. <laughs> are the two men to watch? And on the San Francisco Giants, we have uh, first baseman Travis Ishikawa. Okay. Uh, Pat hmm. Burrell, yes. left fielder, and Andres Andres Torres, Torre, yes, uh, center fielder. Who is that pitcher with the beard that looks That's like a leather daddy? The one who looks like he uses just for men. What? Are, it's a very dark yeah, black. Yeah, that's beard. him. That's Brian Wilson. He also has real funky kind of faux hawk haircut. He, you know, he's kind of hot. Yeah, is this he, the same he, Brian Wilson from the the Beach Boys? It's to, completely or Beach different. Bones? Oh, yeah. Darn. Incidentally, I have an ex named Brian Wilson. Brian so <laughs> Wilson, uh, in fact, at the parade for the Giants' victory, made a comment about you know he's up there in front of 1.5 million people and he thought he might have a heart attack, but maybe that's just the smell of Prop 19 in the air. Oh wow! And oh, he got geez. quite a laugh. Prop that's 19, funny. of course, which failed in California, was the the pot measure. Pot, yeah. And um, now on to like some of our other quick items. Uh, Heidi Klum has a line of active wear. Oh. Um, she's launching in conjunction with New Balance, and it's called HKNB, and it's not cheap. The, the items in this are not cheap. Well, neither cheap is Heidi. Well, no, she isn't cheap. <laughs> um, Wonkat reports on the drag queen race, which took place in D.C. near DuPont Circle. Uh, non, not many details were really given, but a lot of alcohol was involved and some very uh, – Intricately dressed drag queens 
ran. If, if it was around DuPont Circle, I bet. They, well, well, they ran to DuPont Circle. It was like in the oh, area. Oh, okay. Yeah. That um, sounds like a lot of fun. Shaq dressed as a real, real scary drag queen for Halloween. And, <laughs> and there's a video of him on our Facebook site, facebook.com forward slash compete sports media, where he's, um, he kind of looks a little bit Flip Wilson as Geraldine. Oh, and he's performing, <laughs> he's kind of lip syncing to Deja Vu by uh, Beyonce. I'm smelling a new Tyler Perry movie coming up. <laughs> Shaq Dia. Shaq Dia. Yes. There you go. Oh and um, a couple of the last two things I really wanted to quickly get to is uh, New York Giants. Eli Manning is going to be a dad. Oh, I did found out. That. And um, Barry Bonds uh, stated Your that Your favorite, he, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, he stated that he may be a coach someday, that he has a gift to a share. A coach of what? Baseball. <laughs> yeah, I doubt that will happen. Little League? Oh, can you imagine Barry Bonds coaching kids? How we're, about how we're about, trying to get Buddy to open up and really express his true feelings about things? Come how on. about one of the San Francisco gay softball teams? You know what? That's that just be... crazy enough to happen. <laughs> well, that's all we have for this week's edition of Sports Pop. Excellent. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we've got a commercial coming up from Logo. Compete Sports Radio Network. It's time to put the pedals to the metal in the first ever floral design competition series. This is not your grandmother's gardening show. The arrangement of the first ever floral design competition series shows what it takes to be a master in the cutthroat business of extreme floral design. With high stakes challenges, colorful contestants, and explosive conflicts, the arrangement reveals that surviving the world of floral design is far from tiptoeing through the tulips. Watch new episodes of The Arrangement on Mondays at 10, 9 central on Logo TV. You're listening to Compete Sports Radio Network. All right, welcome back. And it, we not only love the commercial, we love the break because we all got a chance to cough while, while that was going on. Um, we want to talk about our new issue of Compete that's out, Buddy, as the, the editor-in-chief. What do you want to talk about in this new issue? Everything. Yay. But we'll, we'll keep it brief. You know, Connie, one of the things about running a magazine like Compete, you know, working here as all of us do, a lot of people are always saying, how do you find things to fill this magazine? But it's really not difficult because there's so much. A lot of times we have a challenge of trying to cram a lot of things in to our magazine True. and this issue our november issue i feel like we have just a magazine jam-packed full of good stuff we we, we really do we really yeah. do. there really is a lot this it, issue. it's really awesome i'm very proud of it uh, for one our cover feature is a story about out um gay high school and college athletes yeah, some of them I, still in college some i have to to really say as the mother of a gay son who was not an athlete per se but who turned out to be a world-class professional dancer um knowing what they go through and trying to trying to keep them on some kind of an even keel while they have all these problems at school this is such a wonderful gift to be able to give readers out there and hopefully you're going to share it with people you know who are young and okay, I'll get off my soapbox. That's box. okay Connie because that's what we're trying to do with this feature is really show examples Positive examples, which is what Compete yes. has been about since the beginning of showing, you know, about showing positive examples of gay athletes. But uh, especially in this current climate, that being young and being out and being an athlete on top of all of that, uh, it, it's possible. It and, is possible. You know, there are people who have gone through it and continue to go through it, and things are getting better. And the stories that uh, these young people have to share, I think, are really terrific. But let's be honest, not everything's great, and That's we talk true. about that in the story as well, about how there's still a lot of homophobia in college athletic departments. But I think the story can really have a positive impact on a lot of young people who read it. So we're very proud of that. So what else do we got in that We've issue? We've got other things. We have coverage of the Gay Bowl, which oh, took yeah. place here in Phoenix uh, in October. Uh, congratulations once again to the LA Motion for winning their fourth title and second in a row. We have a, a winter travel preview that you wrote, Connie. It um, is. We... We alluded to that earlier. It's all about 
gay ski weekends and gay winter events that are going on around and, the country. Yeah, it sounds like such fun. I'm not a skier. I follow Irma Bombeck's deal that I'll never participate in a sport that has an ambulance waiting at the bottom of the hill. Right. But but <laughs> all of the, the fun things that go on, the apres ski things, uh, it just those people who love winter sports are going to have a great time no matter which one they choose. Yeah, and I actually wanted to throw in there that um, a Blowing Rock uh, in North Carolina. I can't Summit, w- and we're sponsoring them, yes. Yeah, and they're, they've kind of upped the ante this year. Summit 2011. Yeah, and um, I also wanted to mention the uh, first annual uh, Shoot the Butte, which is a benefit for the Matthew right. Shepard Foundation. Yes. Uh, that's that's another one to watch. And we're also sponsoring uh, Tell You Right Gay Ski Week, yep. which is one of the, the fairly... Big ones. Yes, exactly. That's, yeah, been named uh, the best one out there. So. And, Connie, until you wrote this story, I didn't realize how many of these events were out there. And oh, yeah. And you touched on, what, about a dozen of them? Yes. And uh-huh. there's, I think there's still more out there. We, oh, yeah. <laughs> there's and quite a few more, actually. There, there really are. It, it was just a matter of trying to, to pick some that had geographic distribution um, so that people have an idea of what's out there. Um, but you can find a lot of information online, but some of it wasn't already yet. But there's information in there. Uh, when we went to press, some of the things weren't firmed up. Mm-hmm. But there's information on how you can get in touch with them once their, their schedules are up mm-hmm. and ready to go. Well, also, I wanted to get in. Uh, one of my favorite writers that we have, Heather Robinson, who always has a really great uh, angle on stories that, that she does, wrote about gay dodgeball, which is really taken <laughs> off in New York and L.A. You know, and it's, I'm it's, it's really big in both of those um, cities, actually. Yeah. She's a really funny, clever writer, and, and I, I just enjoy whatever she writes for us. But um, I, I hope people read that story because it's fun, and, and I hope that dodgeball spreads because I – I wouldn't mind joining joining well, a dodgeball league. I was going to say, I bet you you would enjoy that because you love volleyball and and I love taking out my aggression on other people. <laughs> uh, apologies, okay. by the way, to everyone here at the table. Um, also, just the bruises before, are healing. <laughs> just before we went to press, we were able to get in some photos from the World Gay Rodeo Finals uh, that happened just very just recently. Just almost to the end of October, uh, Yeah, we it? squeezed those in at the end of the uh, <laughs> cycle, and uh, so there's some fun photos, some fun rodeo photos. Good. Wow, that's like a tongue twister. Oh, and how about our new column? We have a couple of really cool new columns um, that have debuted in the last few issues. Uh, one is our yearbook, uh, which uh, is really, cool. really It's really neat, our back buddy. Page feature, I like that. Sort of like what happened on this day in sports history. And we have a scouting report where we look at things like uh, upcoming sports seasons and professional and college sports and that kind of thing. Those are both a couple of fun new things that we're doing now. Mm-hmm. And how about our Dare Dave column? Dare Dave is another new column where one of our publishers... Uh, now, you've got to understand that Dave is about 12 feet tall, and he speaks with such a thick brogue that it's hard to understand him. He doesn't talk a lot, but he's really funny. And so his first challenge was to work, or to walk, rather, in uh, the Palm Springs Desert AIDS uh, walk that you were in, Alfonso. Mm-hmm. And he did make it, but we've got a good picture of him eating his uh, high-energy yeah. breakfast in the magazine. So we've got that and more stuff, including a holiday-themed gym bag. And I know Alfonso wants to talk about uh, one of the items uh, that's in our gym bag this issue. Is that right, Alfonso? Yeah, we'll just go right into that. Um, one of the uh, items, actually it's the first item you'll see in our gym bag, is the Cannondale Synapse Carbon 5 bike. And Did this, you need oxygen for that? A little bit. <laughs> uh, what's so special about this bike is it actually won an award for, let's see, <laughs> what was it? Bicycling Magazine's 2010 Award for Best Plush Bike. My gosh, for, it is impressive. For your it. sensitive areas. Okay. Yeah, and what this what's so great about this bike is it's the preferred bike of most AIDS life cycle riders, at oh, least really? for the ones in California. Can somebody explain? Well, maybe this isn't the time, but at some <laughs> future date, explain to me why men's bicycles with their anatomy has to have I've a rod going right down that. the middle. I've That's always thought stupid. that. I think because if you do fall, you don't want to fall that far because then you fall. It's even worse, probably. That it probably has something to do with the architecture of the bike and supporting the frame. Don't you wish well, you were like... Well, what, what happens with women? They don't need the same support. I mean, that doesn't make sense. Maybe it's the weight. Who okay. knows? Well, don't you, don't you wish sorry. you were like Ellen DeGeneres, where you could mention on air the Cannondale Synapse Carbon 5, and they would send you like a box of them? Yeah, I would love that. 
because these things cost two thousand one hundred and forty nine dollars. And I know plenty of people who will buy those because yeah. bikes, good bikes like that, are worth it. Yeah, if, and if you're a I mean, really that's, you're a biker, that's, yeah. that's a week long bike ride, and if you're comfortable, there you go. Uh, if you want to find out more about this bike, go to www.cannondale.com. All righty. Well, I think we're going to start to wrap it up today. We want to thank you for spending another half hour with us, and we hope you're going to join us again next week. And so from all of us here at Compete Radio, this is um, your barking cast leaving <laughs> you and wishing you a wonderful week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>